Hey, hey, it's Mega, aka the Art Messiah, here to save you from your art sins. Welcome back to another artist interview. Uh, today, I have a special guest. Uh, his name is Andrew Henry, a very successful freelance artist um, working full time on comics and illustration. Um, welcome, Andrew. How are you doing today? Amazing. Hello, Mega Master. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of jump right into it. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um, and like where you're from? I'm from Egypt. My name is Andrew Henry, as you have said. said. Uh, my works have entered several comic cons. I've made made a couple of exhibitions at uh, here at uh, Egypt and in Dubai. Uh, I've sent um, many works worldwide and got published through um, United States, Europe and India and even in Kingdom Saudi Arabia in in Dubai too. Wow, that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, so how did Thanks. you kind of get uh <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. How did you kind of get started in in realizing that comics was kind of a passion of yours? What got you inspired to get into it? Actually, when I so I remember I have been interested in comics for since since my childhood. I remember reading books about the uh, Spider-Man, Flash, and Batman, X-Men. Those those books were translated into Arabic, and I uh, it got me interested in the drawings and the art and the story and how can they draw things like that please and then I, I I remember taking this, the, those books and went to gra my grandfather and my mother please try to mimic those drawings into action figures to me so I can try to play with them <laughs> so it ended up <laughs> like a, 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 two, a 2D drawing on a paper and with Couple of uh, of moving arms, and they cut cut it with a with a scissors, so I can play it with them. And I always I remember always cutting them in half, so they will have to draw it again for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, actually. So kind of like wanting to make your own action figures kind of led you into learning a little bit about the process. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> It's, it was very simple. It's, it's only paper. Paper. Uh, I did. I, I was a very. My, I was, my mind didn't catch up with uh, v with the complex of, of the plastic action figures. So a paper would just fit. Try to play with. I didn't put in my my mind that complex about the. Uh, the joints, the the solid, the the material. I didn't get that up after before ten years or twelve. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I see what you're saying. It's definitely uh, you know, you you learn in different steps and stages, but um, that was kind of the let's say origins of getting into drawing which is really awesome yeah yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anime, <laughs> that's really cool and uh, i really the like cartoons that. and the anime that was aired on mm. tv at this time i remember watching t m n t teenage mutant ninja turtles the, 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 that's the, a good one the 90s yeah the 90s ones a very old one uh, it was Funny and amazing, the colors attracted my eyes, and I w always wanted to know what are, what are the neutrons and uh, who is Shredder and is he g ever going to take his mask off? And these things <laughs> always made me want to draw more and would love to draw. But uh, my skills was not enough for me, and I w I didn't have. Hmm. much skill at this time so all I could draw at this time was very stick 
stick stick figures, uh, some circles as a mm. hand, and explosions. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you were drawing these these uh, illustrations, these explosions and stick figures? When did you when did you like first pick up the pencil? Uh, I remember from uh, if you remember, <laughs> may, may, maybe maybe from KG one or. I was younger than this, maybe, because uh, when I entered school, uh, they always uh, sent for my mother to tell her, your son is always drawing in the class, you should do something about this. So, <laughs> I, I can't give a specific number about, specific age about that, but... I all uh, I always love drawing. Yeah, since my first years, I loved drawing. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Thanks. Definitely. Uh, after talking to people and seeing how you know young they started drawing, it it's truly incredible. So, what was um, I guess a uh, a turning point for you in your art career where you realized that, you know, this is what I want to do full time? Or did you always have that idea in your head when, you're, when you were young? This is a, uh, uh, before, at, at the college, at the, at the faculty, faculty of Fine Arts, when I entered the department of animation, I remember I was thinking about I always wanted to be hired by Marvel uh, and DC Comics at this time. So I should have and started studying how can I reach those things and I, will, I remember I was shocked entirely that the, how the submission system works for them it was through, through the cons and they, we all know that they don't look at the emails or stuff like that. You will have to talk uh, di directly to the editor. So mm -hmm. this stuff made me kind of lose hope while in the same time I wanted to be an artist. I looked at the Debian art artist. At the same time, I found and figured it out that they lived lived entirely from commissions and comic books. You shouldn't, you you don't have to be working for the major companies to be able to live as a as a freelance artist, as a full time artist. It's only a matter of time to discover that you you need some some qualifications, some points, some major skills to be able to live as a, as a full-time artist. After that time, I engaged my fiancé and started thinking about the future. Actually, I got something that I, I never prepared, so at that time that I I was I uh, did have a desk job a government asked and sent for the 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 ones with the best degrees at the faculty to be hired by the government to be responsible for cultural palace and Culture palace jobs and TV jobs. I didn't have a TV jobs like the other other my other friends, but I got a, I got one with the culture palace for about four five years five four or five or five years. After that, I went to the library, uh, Miss Public Library. I enjoyed working there. I learned. I learned from my desk job at the Culture Palace how can I draw under any circumstances? I how can I draw under the, under pressure, under 
negative comments under every bad possible comment you can hear. I learned to draw <laughs> and don't care about anything. I mm. wouldn't be able to draw at Comic Con Dubai or any con I attended if I didn't have this skill. Besides, I learned how to manage and make art events, exhibitions and prepare them from the, from the library. Uh, I was a manager of the graphic department there, so I had to prepare events, uh, art events at, the, at my city. So it helped me a lot to, pre to make the, the grand project, the Andrew Henry project character. Uh, after I reached a point at this, and I started to get income enough to stand up, stand my house, uh, me and my wife, we both decided that I should completely leave the dish job and start my full-time artist job. Wow, wow, that's that's incredible, and definitely, you know, there's a lot to unpack there, and, um, you know, it's an incredible story of, well, one kind of just like that idea that you can be online and, you know, make a lot of your income from commissions, and then kind of growing into um, being comfortable and confident with your art skills to be able to draw in front of other people. Um, mm -hmm. those are a lot of skills that a lot of artists have to develop and, um, kind of go through in order to start to, um, gain an audience and also be really confident in themselves. So that's, that's really incredible. Great. Yeah. So, um, my channel is all about, uh, making comics and how we can become better comic artists and what are the skills, tools, techniques, and resources that we need. So these next set of questions are really going to be about um, uh, going to be about that and kind of drawing out some information and stuff that you've learned through your journey and um, getting to the position that you're at now. So I want to start off and ask you like, what's your schedule like um, day to day? Like take me um, with you on like a typical average day for Andrew Henry. Well, actually, I am kind of prepared about this one because my day is after I wake up, I pray. After I pray, start warming up and drawing, gesture drawing. Uh, eat breakfast. After that, I start working on commissions, comic books, draw something for myself, draw on my comics. Uh, some days I go to the gym. I go to the gym three days a week, to be specific. Um, when I return from the gym, I have my lunch, then work again. Uh, after that, I can reward myself with playing video games and party or part with my family, watch a film or uh, or some Netflix, then go to bed, then I repeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really cool to hear, because um, I've talked to some other artists before, and some are full-time, some are part-time, so it's really interesting to hear kind of the... Um, full-time artist kind of talk about that experience so um, I do want to ask uh, do you have like a written schedule for your day or do you have flexibility it sounds like you have like a certain schedule you like to follow every day um, is that something that like took practice to get into the habit of or like what do you recommend for artists to do to really get into the habit of drawing every day you'll have to be stubborn you have to be stubborn to get the grip, get the grip of your all day. I'm 
in front of me now as I'm talking to you I got a, a full wall board wall board with sticky notes on it the day telling me each day what should I do for the next seven days and what should I achieve in this month and the next month and maybe some very small points what I should do this year if I'm going to do a graphic novel or if I'm going to draw do, make a new new book or comic things like that so you have to prepare everything in your mind on paper talk through the paper if you are yeah. if you are an artist you already know the paper and the and the pencil language so start doing this it's gonna help definitely yeah that is that's really good advice and um, I've learned over the years to um, make a conscious decision to actually write down what it is that I need to do instead of keeping it in my head because there's something about the process of writing it down um, that allows you to have it in front of you and it's kind of there as a reminder and you don't just have to keep it in your head all the time. Exactly. So I really like that. That's powerful. Yeah, exactly. Um, can you... Can you run me through, um, let's say you're working on a comic, you know, and that's one of the big goals you have. Um, I know some people, they like start off with, I'm going to do all the pencils first and I'm going to do all the inks. What do you kind of recommend? What do you like to do when you're sitting down to make a comic? What's a little bit of your thought process and your drawing process? The very most important thing that I think it's very the most the most important is layouts. Layouts is very important. Mm. Rough lines, some call it rough lines, some ca call it uh, uh, basic shapes. I I call it layouts. It's very important to understand the the motion of your page, the the sequential numbers you are going to have, the page flow, the cameras, the masses, as the comic page is kinda complicated. It's not like any art piece. If you look at the, an art piece you can see that the artist is making your eyes flow and move through the painting. While in comic page the artist should understand carefully the differences and the complex and the negative and the positive parts between the left page and the right page because you are telling a story mm -hmm. like if you made the whole left page into cold cold colors you will have to make the right one into warm colors to make a balance between both two so the reader and the viewer will be happy can the, his eyes peacefully looking at the image it's not like I have done with this mm -hmm. panel it's okay so I should move to the next one and, mm -hmm. the, and the process as is no you shouldn't do this you, as a comic artist, you will have to understand every major step you are going to do. You are, uh, I remember saying that, I said it many occasions before, you are the actor, the director, the, the light manager, the, the makeup artist, the costume designer, uh, fashion designer. Uh, you are everything in comic and comic book. Right. Right, you're wearing so many different hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is so true. And I feel like as a reader, you you may not think that there goes, or that the um, creator is putting so much thought into it. And as they're saying, it's not necessarily, oh, make a pretty panel and then make the next pretty panel. Yeah. You're thinking about the entire page as a whole composition. Exactly. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that is um, amazing and pretty. Um, I wouldn't say advanced, but for uh, beginner artists out there, um, keep this in the back of your mind. Um, make sure that you're focusing on the whole composition of the comic instead of, you know, just an individually cool looking character or cool looking pose. Yeah. And sometimes we can forget about that. We can focus in on the details. Ma many beginners focus on this and forget the, the aspects of the, the, the comic page or the comic art. It's, it's called storytelling for story telling you should be able to tell story without balloons and without talking like when you read a comic yeah. and the the you watch a drawing drawing pattern about an event that's happening while the talking balloons are telling a very different things like this character is lying so you have the ability you must have the ability to be able to tell that this character is lying through emotions, through the page flow, through the events that you will be drawing. So we will have to be able carefully to draw these events without putting on your shoulders or remember or giving much majority to the, the, the token balloons. You are an artist, not a letterer. Remember this. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I really like that advice. Because it you do have to really focus on the storytelling aspect of your art and to really do the... or really let your art do the speaking. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, I, uh, I like that. So um, before you move on to my next question, um, is there anything else that you want to mention about kind of like the comic making process, um, a piece of advice that has really stuck with you? Um, yeah, there is a very small, small thing, but it's very important. Drawing hands and legs. I was shocked actually before when I've been talking to an editor and the editor told me you draw the masses and the face is good but you are not master of the limbs. You don't have any mastery about uh, the hands or the legs. You should have study those carefully then start drawing comics not the other way around. I looked at, at the matter strangely until I figured it out. When you talk to another car, another person, you figure that your hands and the body movement, the symphony and the harmony of the body, is balanced by the hands and the legs. George Bridgman proved it. If you read the George Bridgman book about drawing figures, understanding the anatomy and drawing figures, you'll understand carefully that the, the hands and the legs are very important parts. So, me, most artists don't put effort on learning and drawing gesture or learning how to draw those very important, the very important. Yeah things right because if you think about it kind of the humans are usually what's telling the story so if you know how to express and do the figures of a uh, human then you can really more accurately convey expression and story so those are some gold nuggets guys i hope you guys are writing down some of the stuff that andrew is talking about <laughs> and what was that book you said it was it was by george George Bridgman. George Bridgman. All right. So if you haven't heard of that book, then look that up and definitely check it out. Okay. So the next question that I have is, do you have any tips and tricks for saving some time while you're making comics? Because we all know that 
it takes a really, really long time to make a comic page. So is there any little shortcuts or things you found or anything of that nature? Well, I'm going to tell you three, three important things to take notes about. The first one is drawing gesture daily. Daily. It's very important to draw gesture because mm -hmm. uh, gesture is based on trying to mimic the pose in front of your eyes in the page in front of you in a matter of seconds. So you will train your mind and your hand to be able to figure out the pose and uh, fill the area in panels. Um, balance the page because you will understand how, how many figures you are going to draw in the single page. The first thing as a, is drawing gestures. The second thing, as I said, it's layout. The third, third point is try to use professional software and when I say professional softwares it's like I uh, I love love inking my works on clip paint studio and color them on Photoshop I don't ink my works on Photoshop because I uh, I don't feel the Photoshop is like fit for inking comics it's my own, it's, it's my Andrew Henry theory. It's not like I'm telling any bad comments or negative comments to you guys, but I'm telling this cause when I look at the clip paint studio and the uh, inking tools in it, I feel like I am in, in a stationery shop and buying inking pens and trying them out with different lines, with different features it's very fun and it's very enjoyable this is the third point I'm gonna add a point point number four yeah go ahead if you if you, tr if you try to get the grip of your day you should be able to draw two pages daily two pages daily uh, if you be able to draw that, then everything will be fine. If you, if you are, the, are an artist that professional in penciling and don't have a required skill or good, good enough skill with the inking, you should try to hire an inker. It doesn't have to be a very a very a very talented or skillful inker to to uh, get him hired no maybe with your experience and his experience you make something fine so it will save time it will make you focus more on the pencil and finish faster than you think i hear you the, and those are really good, good points to kind of take note of. And uh, for everyone, they're going to really figure out what works mm -hmm. for them. But that's why I love asking this question because we can generate more ideas and people can start to think like, oh, I've never thought about trying that before. And then that could really help them through their process. So thanks for sharing those tips. And we'll go ahead and jump into the next question. Um, which is, how do you go about marketing your work um, once you've finished a comic or even during the process of making a comic? How do you make yourself stand out in the uh, crowded sea of artists out here? Well, this, this question skins a hard cause. Today, social media is very important for every artist to get expanded. On it, I I watch other artists 
got more more followers on social media than they have at any con so social media is very important if you try daily to give websites as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Patreon websites to help you grow you should give that time because when you end the comic you are going to sell it on drive through comics or comicsology or any other website like this you should have a background backers able to help you um, I entered about three campaigns at Kickstarter and they this, all three failed but I learned from that failure because master is based about on failure failure is gonna make you a master you don't be a master in just a second or a flip of a coin you'll have to know the what worked or what didn't work so you will have you won't repeat this again and try another thing it's it's kind of complicated but you'll figure <laughs> you, you will have to search for tips online i do it for myself i search other artists how they if they made a profit from a book or something like that how they are going to sell it online or how, how they are going to make a campaign a successful campaign i watch closely and learn from them sometimes uh, it makes a hit and sometimes not even the, the the major companies i talked with a major editor at uh, he he was his job was finding talents for Marvel and DC and he told me there's only 400 books in the in the on the shelves at the United States and in on the world from DC and Marvel how many books do you think of them they succeed and make a hit while others doesn't make any so you will have to understand and figure what should I do on the next step and what I shouldn't while looking at other artists and learning carefully from them and from the movements on the social media. Right, that's so powerful. Learning, learning from your mistakes and seeing what went wrong and then comparing that with what other artists are doing um, is critical for like learning how you can help like promote yourself online um, and I do that constantly myself too so for the rest of you out there be look at the people that you admire and see how they uh, connect and communicate with their audience and how they promote their work yeah so we kind of all go through this especially when you're like you know maybe you're past a beginner artist you're starting to get more into the uh, intermediate realm. And um, sometimes it can be really hard to stay motivated when you're not really having any feedback or like recognition. There's so many like young artists that go online and they post their work and then they're like, well, I'm not getting any uh, recognition or any feedback or any views. So what are some things that uh, they can do to stay motivated even during this period? This is a very important question and, and, and very, a very, I call, I, I, I may call it an epic question for every artist or for every aspiring or beginner or a professional even. I have faced many bad people in the industry and they have broken me too much. But I am a stubborn guy. I believe that I am a fighter, a warrior. So lately, 
I pray and be more stubborn. Be stubborn. Like I remember we've been talking to an editor and the editor asked me and told me that we are working for a new major title. We bought the rights from Image Comics and we will be working on this title. So you are the artist for this type. Okay, I got no problems with this. But you have to make studies for the characters. And I did studies for the characters. After I sent him the studies, he said they are good. After that, believe it or not, he blocked me on Facebook. I got shunned with it after he was speaking about contracts for six issues. I got mad. I was kind of feel depressed while my wife helped me and worked with me. She is my anchor and my flatter uh, on the page and my, my commissions. So she, she is kind of my my other half in work, my teamwork on working on the comics. She got, even she, she got depressed and she was very sad about what happened. But I remember the saying that say, your future is what you do every day. So, if I want to be an artist, and I am an artist, I should be drawing. This is what got me to be even talking to you right now, that I didn't submit, I didn't surrender. So, I wanted to fight this feeling, fight this depression. You must fly to get your dreams. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. You'll have to put your mindset into this. So, don't care about what the world around you pushes you through. You'll figure it out somehow to fight against everything. You, if you want to draw comics, comics, the first ones is based about, first old ones is based on adventures and superheroes. So you must live your own adventure and be the superhero of your own story. Don't give any, any bad or negative energy don't care about this negative. Don't care about these bad comments. Don't care about the guys who hustled you and try to get your art and don't pay you any cents about it. Don't care about anything from this. I don't want, don't know if I should this, should say this or no, but I, even when I was a child, my father used to tear apart every drawing I do and treat me badly and didn't want to, me to be a different person. He always said that I'm a failure and I'm not a good child and very crazy stuff like this. Well, I was very stubborn because I believed that my future is different. I should be an artist because I want to be an artist and no one is going to stop me from doing it. Because every human being on this earth is talented somehow. Talented through music, talented through art, talented through, through singing writing, directing, it's a talent somehow. So you will have to use this talent and channel the energy to it and focus, focus your, your world and see the world through your talent. If you do this, you can 
pass through any bad situation you are going to put yourself into or the others around you is going to put you into. Um, yeah, I just want to uh, say thank you for um, sharing that. And hopefully that will encourage other people to do the things that they believe they are talented at. Talented at so. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to um, start kind of wrapping it up. So my next question is, what's the next big thing for you? What are your, um, what, give me one short-term goal and give me one kind of long-term goal that you have. And uh, tell us why we should be excited about your, your comics and stories coming up. Okay, what I'm planning as my major goal for the for the next for what I need is expanding my social media marketing, helping others in need. As I said, I am the superhero of my own story, so I want to get my message heard worldwide. And I'm aiming for the stars. As for my comics that are coming and the ones that I am planning to do, and the audience should expect them from me, I'm working on several projects. One from them is called Tales of Silence. It's a short manga story collected in a single, bo single book. And uh, the other one is uh, is called Smile. Actually, I I'm still planning if I should make it as a graphic novel, a black and white graphic novel, or a full color comic page series, a, a limited series about it's called it's about the human emotions, the money, meekness, the, sp the spiritual war inside everyone and himself the war between the, the ego the super ego and the id and working on my favorite comic it's called classified hazard it's about a villain that's trying to redeem himself but the world doesn't accept him as a as a hero or someone he should live on earth after what he did as a villain Hmm. Okay. Those sound really interesting. And what we're going to do is we're going to link those comments in the description down below so people can find your work and kind of keep up with you. Now, um, I don't know if you want to participate in this, but at the end of an interview, I like to do a, a lightning round of questions. They're kind of unscripted, per se. And... Um, they're basically going to be a series of questions where it's just going to be like a wor one word response typically and you're just supposed to like answer them really quickly. Um, so are you ready for the lightning round? I will try my best. All right, number one, what is your favorite music genre? Um, metal and rock and roll. Post-rock po post too. All right, all right. Favorite cartoon slash anime? Favorite cartoon, uh, Batman animated, and uh, anime One Piece. Nice, that's my favorite too. All right, what about your favorite webcomic, if you have one? My favorite webcomic, actually, I, 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 can't, I can't remember the names because I've read many and liked many about it, but... Mm, maybe maybe one that uh, Chamba made back in the years. Jeffrey Cruz Chamba made made one, made one back in the years. I can't remember the name. Oh no problem, no problem. Maybe if you look it up, then you can send me a link. Um, next one, favorite food. Favorite food. Actually, if I if I didn't be an artist, I would love to be. A chef, so I, I I love to cook. So uh, my favorite food is is grilled grilling, gr 
shish kebab or uh, grilled meat. Oh, I'm just getting hungry thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like eating too. <laughs> I like food. All right. And the last one is, what is your favorite YouTuber? My favorite YouTuber? Actually, uh, I, I would love to say you because you are the first one who made an interview with me and uh, Muhammad, yeah. <laughs> Muhammad, Muhammad Abgadi. Muhammad Abgadi is a very amazing dude and he, he, he know how to introduce and give many uh, tips and tricks to, and to the aspiring artists and doesn't get greedy about any info he w he loves to help others so i think i'm walking the same path as him <laughs> nice that sounds like a um a great person to follow so i will definitely be following him too Okay, well, awesome. Thank you so much for uh, sitting down and sharing some of your time with us. And uh, the last thing I just want to ask is where can people find you on the social medias and online? Um, on Facebook, it's um, Andrew Henry. You can find my picture right now on my profile as I am being eaten by a dinosaur uh, or deviant art. <laughs> And you can find my channel on YouTube. It's called Wet Deft Cause. It's it's like we deft, we deft, we 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 learn to draw quickly and skillfully together. Or Wednesday deft that I always post uh, a new video uh, with commentary, exclusive commentary on Wednesday. So it's double name. Awesome. All right. Well, um, thank you again for uh, stopping by and uh, having a quick interview and chat with us. Thanks to um, you. For the know. audience out there. Uh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad I got the opportunity to. Um, for the audience out there, uh, let me know what you guys thought about this interview. One thing that you learned and uh, who would you like to see next? So let me know down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, let's have a conversation about that. So Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And until next time, peace and love. And uh, peace. <laughs>